Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this hydrating body gel. So not only am I going to be showing you guys this recipe, but it's also going to be kind of like an informative video because I want to talk kind of a lot about this ingredient called sodium carbomer. Car carbon. Carbomer. Carbomer? Carbomer. Sodium carbomer. Yeah, there we go. I got it right. And the reason why is because ever since I posted the cucumber jelly mask and the vanilla rose jelly mask, I've been getting so many questions from you guys asking if you can use sodium carbomer instead of the xanthan gum. So I'm sort of going to be answering that question by um, explaining to you guys exactly my experience with sodium carbomer. So I purchased the pre-neutralized kind over on Lotion Crafter, so I can only speak upon pre-neutralized sodium carbomer. I know there are other carbomers out there, but um, I don't know how those work because I've never worked with them. This one specifically has already been pre-neutralized. Other carbomers, you actually need to raise the pH in order to get it to gel. This one has already been neutralized, so as soon as you add it into water and mix it in, it will gel. And it creates solutions that are around a pH of 6 to 7.5. If you lower it any lower than 6, it will start to thin out and not be a gel anymore. So it's basically only useful in pHs between 6 to 7.5, and we'll talk more about that later. This sodium carbomer, carbomer, uh, so weird to say. Sorry. I have issues pronouncing everything as you guys know at this point. Um, but this one specifically is recommended to be used at 0.2 to 0.5%. So you only need a little bit of it to gel your solution. I also want to highlight on the fact that it says you can use it in eye gels, body washes, shampoos, creams, and lotions. But um, I really want to question the fact that you can use it in body washes and shampoos, and we'll get into that. This is basically what I found uh, while working with sodium carbomer. It's really only compatible with very few ingredients. It's not compatible with sodium PCA because it just thins out as soon as you add it in. It doesn't work in sodium lactate liquid. It's also not compatible with hydrolyzed proteins because, again, it just thins out as soon as you add them in along with cationic surfactants that don't work either. It'll just thin out. And I also tried it with anionic surfactants. It just thins out with those, so that's why I don't think you can use it in body washes and face washes. I also tried it with an anthoteric surfactant. That thinned out immediately as well. Um, there are a few emulsifiers you can use it with. So it is compatible with non-ionic emulsifiers, and I'll actually, um, I have a recipe coming soon, hopefully, of using it with non-ionic surfactants, so look out for that. But um, it is also compatible with extracts. I've had good luck with that. I've only used a few extracts with it, but overall I'm pretty sure it's fine to use extracts. And hydrosols, that works perfectly fine as well. Again, I haven't tried all the hydrosols, but I've tried a couple and that works fine too. It stays a jelly solution. I did use it with DL Panthenol, that worked fine. I didn't try it with Allantoin, but I'd imagine it works. I don't see why not. And I haven't tried it with niacinamide, but that this should work as well. But of course, if you've tried it with these and it didn't work, let me know. But just going off of what I've dealt with so far with this, it should work. So now that you know what it's not compatible with, let's get into this hydrating body gel recipe so you guys can figure out how I made it with the sodium carbomer. One more thing, I'm actually going to be avoiding glycerin in this recipe because I found using glycerin in gels just makes it feel way too sticky. Of course, you do you. If you wanna add it in, go ahead, but this will not be humectant in this recipe. All right, so I'm gonna start this out by showing you guys the formulation. Normally, I show this at the end, but I just kinda of wanna give you guys a good look at how minimal this formulation is because it's, like I've mentioned, it's not compatible with many ingredients. So yeah, let's get into it so I can show you guys how I made it. So we're gonna be making a 100 gram batch and I'm starting with the grape essence water. Now this one, uh, it kind of smells like a medicine, like a grape flavored medicine. That's the best way I can describe how it smells. So it's not really the best, but you know, maybe you'll like it. And I'm gonna be adding in 10 grams of it. Now I'm gonna be adding in some propylene glycol. This is a humectant that will help add hydration to your skin and I added in 10 grams of this as well. And then I'm gonna be incorporating some cucumber extract because I wanted something in this product other than hydration and cucumber is a lovely soothing ingredient. 
So that is why I chose this extract because as you guys know, I just got some sensitive skin and I love soothing ingredients. So I'm going to be adding in 2 grams of the cucumber extract. Next I'm going to be using some DL Panthenol. This is another lovely hydrating ingredient and I'm going to be adding in 2 grams of the DL Panthenol. And you just want to mix that in a little bit to allow it to dissolve, but it won't fully dissolve until I add in the distilled water. But first I'm going to add in some Liquid Dermal Plus, 0.5 grams of it. This is our preservative. And then I'm going to be topping everything off with 75 grams of distilled water and mixing everything up to help dissolve the DL Panthenol. Now I'm going to be setting that to the side and grabbing a small beaker to weigh out the carbomer. Carbomer? I don't know why it's weird to say that word. <laughs> and I weighed out 0.5 grams of it. And then I'm going to be taking this purple mica powder just to make things more fun, you know. Add in some purple colors because it's grape scented, you know. It's only fitting. So I just added in a very small amount of that mica powder. I didn't weigh it out. I just added in a little bit. And once the DL Panthenol is fully dissolved, you can tell by your formulation being clear no powder being left you want to begin by pouring in just a little bit of your carbomer and mica powder and then mixing with immersion blender adding in a little bit more of the powder mixing it in adding in a little bit more until you have it all incorporated so now as you can tell everything looks gorgeous it's a lovely jelly consistency um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is actually package it up in this four ounce jar and I'm not actually sure why I packaged it up in the jar before I uh, balanced the pH, but I guess just that's just what I did. Anyways, I'm going to be taking the pH of this product. And the natural pH lies right around 7.35, which for me, that's just too high for a leave-on product. I want my products to be anywhere between 4.5 to 5.5 for leave-on products. So I'm going to be using this 40% uh, diluted citric acid solution and adding in two drops of it to the hydrating body gel and mixing it in and letting it sit for about a minute to let the pH balance before I take the pH again. Also, if you're wondering how you take the pH of products, I'll link down below to a video that shows you guys exactly how to do that. So here's where the issue lies. I got it down to 6.82. I think I added in like five drops of the citric acid solution, but that's not really relevant because as you can see, it's starting to thin out. The jelly consistency is completely going away. Like I mentioned at the beginning, carbomer has to have a higher pH in order for it to be a jelly consistency. As you can see, if you lower the pH too low, the jelly consistency goes away. So in the end, this is kind of a failed product. And for some reason, I also went ahead and just made a whole other batch of it because I didn't really get enough clips of the luxurious jelly consistency that the first one had. So I made another batch because I do want to reassure you guys that this carbomer does make a beautiful jelly consistency. It's just, it's not compatible with many ingredients and also you can't balance it to a lower pH. But I did use it in a different formulation and I was able to get the pH lower than what I did in this product. I will be showing you guys another recipe using this ingredient with non-ionic surfactants and lowering the pH between 4.5 to 5.5. So yeah, it's just in this specific formula, I couldn't get it lower than what was it like 6.3, 6.5? I don't remember what it was, but it does have this lovely consistency just like my jelly face masks I made. So even though you can't get it to like 4.5 to 5.5, you can still use it as a face mask because a face mask is a wash off product and you don't really need to worry so much about having a balanced pH when it comes to wash off products because you're obviously washing it off. And then afterwards you can just go ahead and apply your serum, toner, whatever else you may be applying to your skin which will restore your skin's pH level. So to answer your guys' question, yeah, you can use it as a replacement for xanthan gum in my jelly face masks. But you need to make sure you're not pairing it with all these ingredients that you can't use it with. And you need to know that you can't lower the pH without it uh, thinning out. But I will be showing you guys another video of me making a hydrating body gel that actually works out. That's not made with carbomer. And then you're also going to be getting a, another recipe using non-ionic surfactants with a balanced pH using carbomer. So I hope you're excited for those videos. But yeah, 
So let's move on to the Patreon shoutouts. At Stardust Bath and Body, Nature's Farm Girl, Kennedy's Essentials, Let's Blend, Creative with Love, Wallflower Wildflower, Heartfelt Beauty, at Sugared underscore Pineapple, KAJ Bath and Body, Blue Mint Soaps, Saytara, at Salt Air Label, Lanise Beauty, Arger Naturals, Shark City Naturals, Ohana Lay, at Danny Botanicals, Eclectic Beauty Cosmetics, Escape Bath and Body, EC Naturals, and at Nino55 over on Instagram. Also, I sell products myself over on Etsy. Go check out my Etsy shop. It'll be linked down below along with all my lovely patrons. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little different. It was like an informative video mixed with like a recipe. I don't know. I don't know really what it was. It was just kind of like a PSA saying, hey, what's up? This is my experience with carbon risk since a lot of you guys have been like mentioning it to me. But I do want to repeat myself one more time. This is just sodium carbomer that is pre-neutralized. There are a few other carbomers out there. Those work differently. I can't speak upon those because I've never used them. If you want to let people know about different types of carbomers that you'd love to use, let people know down in the comments. And maybe I'll try out that ingredient as well. Also, if you like this video, this video kind of has a similar vibe to the types of uh, exclusive videos I post over on Patreon. So I don't know, if you wanna check out my Patreon, go ahead. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for all your love and support. It means the world to me and I hope to talk to you guys in my next video. Later. I'm stuck in the motions. I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm so unshattered. I'm a